Hi and welcome back to my VRealize Automation 7.3 video series. In this part we're gonna talk about endpoints and Fabic groups or Fabic group to be precise because I'm only gonna create one of them. We're gonna talk about an endpoint for vCenter site A and B. I'm gonna create an orchestrator endpoint and an orchestrator endpoint for Active Directory. And then, of course, I'm also going to create the Fabric group. The Active Directory part makes more sense once we actually take a look at it and do it. That being said, let's just, well, off we go and let's just jump right in. So, if we're just going to log in here as an IS administrator, To infrastructure endpoints endpoints. Let's see, we don't have any endpoints. Um, remember the endpoint name we had. If you can't remember the endpoint name during the installation, just have a look at the logs because you can see it is actually complaining that the endpoint or the attached endpoint can't be found. So that's the name you've given um, to the endpoint during installation. So in this case is vcsaa one vgamecouk and vcsab onevgamecouk So we're gonna create those endpoints with these I'm clicking around here <laughs> with these names. It's just gonna new Virtual vSphere vCenter. So, as I say, my endpoint was uh, these perseverance <laughs> vcsaa01.vgame.co.uk, which also is the address. So, just going to copy that HTTP. So, it's going to be not going to use any credentials, HTTPS. So integrated credentials would be where my user here has admin actually admin access to vCenter, but it doesn't. So just gonna enter here my credentials. I have not joined vCenter to the domain yet. Probably should have done that, but that's why I use vCenter.local. Probably not best practice, but as I say, it's always good to design it properly, but this is a lab, so I don't really mind. So I'm just gonna hit test connection. Certificate pop-up should come soon. Um, there we go. We're going to accept the certificate. So that's the PSC certificate. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Do, 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 do. And test connection was successful. Fantastic. We don't do that. We don't do any properties or associations right now. Um, this is where you would associate an NSX endpoint with, or rather the other way around. This is where you would see the NSX endpoint once you associate it with this particular vSphere endpoint. So we're going to hit another one. That's for vcsab vcsab01.vgen.co.uk. Copy that for the address, HTTPS, blah, 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 for the SDK. Same thing, I'm gonna straight uh, to local password. Let's connection, wait for the certificate to show up. There we go. Okay. Wait for the nice message that everything is good. Goody, goody, goody. There we go. Test connection was successful. Hit OK. There's the username, uppercase, lowercase. I love the consistency, but there we go. I'm going to check the logs again. So ideally, you can, you can see if in the log that the error was essentially multiple times within the same minute. I'm just going to ignore that error for now. Um, 
So, if you don't see the error popping up again, that the attached endpoint was or cannot be found, even after you refresh, usually within less than a minute, you should see another error. It doesn't pop up anymore. So we clearly got the two names of the endpoints right. And there aren't any more agents installed with the third one, essentially. So that is good. So that is oh, wonderful. So we go back to endpoints. Uh, actually, fabric. Yeah, let's check, have a look actually at the fabric groups first. So we can see that our two endpoints are visible within the fabric group. You wouldn't see any compute resources if you had, let's say, uh, a mistake in the username and password, etc. So let's gonna create that while we're here. Let's go to the fabric group. And here, as I said, this is where we give our admin, or where we configure the fabric admin. So it's fabric admin. Uh, well, I give it the VRA admin as well, not the group, and of course the administrator, not sure if you hear the background, we're gonna have a nice thunderstorm here, nice. Um, so as I say, I'm gonna just create a one fabric group with two compute resources. Um, that's it. So technically that's it from the point of fabric group, so easy enough. Um, if I just, oops, just what I want to do, it's gonna go to the endpoints again. I'm just gonna create the orchestration at point while we're there. Where we're there. So new orchestration, VRLS orchestrator. I'm just gonna call it VRLS orchestrator. Um, the address will be the VRA VIP because I'm using the embedded VRO server. There's no need anymore to use an external. So, blah, blah, blah. And that has VCO. Don't need a port. The port would be important, especially if you use an external, because then the port would be 8281, but the internal one's running on HTTPS, so we don't necessarily have to specify HTTPS. I'm gonna go, just going to show you so you can see, you can actually browse to that, to the orchestrator, or to the main page anyway. So that is where we point the endpoint to. I'm going to hit OK. And that's for that. So we have now created the orchestrator endpoint and the Fabi group. Now it's probably worth having a look whether the data collection actually works. But I mentioned the Active Directory endpoint. So just gonna look out here. I'm just gonna look in as a Fabric Administrator. So you're looking as a Fabric Administrator. You can now see you have a heck of a lot more of tabs, not just the inbox. So gonna go to the Compute Resources, Compute Resources, and that's where you do a data collection for UV centers. So you can see both sites have been included with both endpoint names, both vCenters. It can populate the memory, storage, etc. So you can see the inventory scan was successful, is enabled. I'm just going to put the frequency to an hour rather than daily. That is when you create, an, let's say, a template or whatever, and the realize automation would not know about that until the cycle has been completed. So we do data collection cycle that is. So we're just gonna do site B as well, same thing, okay, okay. So that is all good. If we now go what where's my brain now? Ah oh, it's not here. I'm a silly monkey. Uh, now let's just lock the out and go back in again as an IS administrator. Stop clicking. So you can see how, how this is done live, if you will. So let's go back in as an IS admin. What I'm going to do now is the data collection of the actual orchestrator endpoint to make sure that that is correct. Usually the orchestrator would already throw an error anyway. So if the credentials are incorrect or if it doesn't, if it can't connect, so we're gonna click it, go to actions, go to data collection, and there we go. We make sure 
time wise yeah five minutes ago um, the data collection has finished so the orchestrator is correct and as I mentioned the last bit we want to do sorry for clicking back and forth as I say I usually could potentially just simply create multiple windows rather than clicking back and forth but there we go so I'm gonna look off again and then look it back in as a tenant administrator as I mentioned I'd like to create an orchestrator endpoint not an endpoint for the orchestrator but an actual orchestrator endpoint so I go to VRO server configuration you can see if you would use an external orchestrator server but I'm not I'm using a default one and there you have another option called endpoints. So I'm going to create a new endpoints for Active Directory. This is important when you do things like uh, username changes, etc. So Active Directory, da, 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 da. LDAP server, that's my DC, and I'm not using any SSL. Um, da, da, da. With just the base DN. It's actually quite straightforward, but I show you again. You go to properties, attribute editor, distinguish name, copy paste, da, 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 and off we go. Before the main again, this is under the tenant admin. I was a bit quick there. Shared session means that any workflow you run for the Active Directory plugin is running under this particular admin. So, for example, I'd like to add users, domains, or whatever. Or computers that means domain admin so my shared session user is the domain admin here so when I use workflows to create any objects in active directory I don't have to specify the credentials but it actually does that so the reason I also wanted to use an active directory endpoint is is because I want to put every VM I deploy via vRealize automation into the particular OU specific for these VMs so I'm going to create a new OU, organizational unit. Uh, let's just call it VRA Deployed Machines. Okay. Back to VRA. So that is all the VMs going in there. So under Active Directory Policies, I'm going to create a new policy. I'm going to call it... Uh, move to OU More description the endpoint we just created the main again and once more I need a distinguished name for the OU so again right click properties attribute editor distinguished name there we go and I bet it's gonna fail because I Got special characters. There we go. Let's just remove the hyphens every time. Do that. <laughs> okay, and that is it. So we have now our endpoints. So we have two vSphere endpoints. We have an we have an uh, vRealize orchestrator endpoint, and for the vRealize orchestrator, we have an Active Directory endpoint, and we create the Fabric group. So that's really done here. So in the next part, we're going to talk about network profiles and business groups. See you then.